The detail here is absolutely stunning. You can see the individual craters, the ejecta blanket, the white material that's coming out from the craters themselves onto the dark maria. Hey guys, I'm in the backyard with the Celestron Nexstar 6SE. This is one of Celestron's best-selling telescopes and for good reason because of its compact form factor and reasonable price point. The six inch aperture that you have here is good for things like the moon um, that I have behind me, which is what I'm gonna look at in just a moment, and planets as well as some of the deep sky objects you might be familiar with like the Orion Nebula. Now, this telescope has over 40,000 objects in its computerized database. You'll be able to find any of these objects within just a few minutes. Before you do that, there is a red dot finder that it comes with up top, as well as a 25 millimeter eyepiece. With that, you'll be able to first get your telescope aligned with something I would suggest during the daytime with the red dot finder, making sure what's in the telescope is aligned with what is seen here with the red dot finder. So to get started, all you have to do is you have to set up the index marks at the top of the scope here. There's two little arrows, you need to line those up. And then you simply flip on the telescope. And the 6SE does not have an internal battery, so I'm powering this off of a separate battery. You'll need that or AC power. And once you've got it fired up, you'll hit enter. And it'll ask you how you would like to align the scope. Now, because I'm looking tonight at the moon, I can actually go down to the option for a solar system alignment. And you'll be asked to put in the time and if it's daylight savings or not, and the date. And then you'll simply select the moon or whatever planet you're looking for. And then once you've done that, you'll move the telescope so that it faces the object. Now, it's important to note that there is a red dot finder scope at the top of the 6SE, and you're going to want to make sure that you put that in alignment with the telescope's optics during the daytime on something that's at least 100 feet away or more. Um, I like to pick out things that are easily discernible, um, something like a telephone pole, and that way when you are looking through this at night, the red dot finder and your telescope are already set up. I also suggest getting things in focus prior to it getting dark outside. It makes things so much easier. And there it is in the eyepiece. Nice. Now, if you're looking for something that's not a solar system object, there are two star alignment options, one star alignment options, and then there's the sky align option as well. All of these are great. Um, they take just a few minutes to get things set up. You will have to get things set up correctly in terms of your, your site, your location, um, with the GPS coordinates to make sure that it's working properly. And, you know, just make sure that you're putting the time and date in correctly as well. Um, once you've got the object aligned, you'll simply put plus enter and then the align button and the solar system alignment is complete. All right, so I've attached my cell phone to the scope. The detail here is absolutely stunning. You can see the individual craters, the ejecta blanket, the white material that's coming out from the craters themselves onto the dark maria. The maria are ancient lava flows that were formed in some of the larger craters of the moon. And they're you know, famous, for example, the Sea of Tranquility uh, is where we landed our first lunar landing. So hooking it up to your phone allows you to have that ability to just pinch to zoom. Um, on many phones now, you'll notice that there are multiple different cameras, and so you're going to want to control which camera you're looking through. Sometimes it's difficult to do that. The phone wants to switch from one camera to another, so keep that in mind as you're you know, using your phone's camera. Uh, that can be somewhat of a, a challenge at times. 
So if you're interested in doing photography, I highly suggest that you get one of these little Bluetooth controllers. This one has a setting for both iOS and Android. I simply turn it on. I find the Bluetooth in my Bluetooth settings on my phone. I pair it with this device. And now I can actually take an image. Right now I just took an image from this device, which means I'm not touching the telescope, I'm not touching the camera, and that reduces the shaking that you would otherwise see. So even if you're just tapping to touch, it does affect the image. You're going to want to take the image with one of these devices, especially if you're doing long exposures on something like a nebula, um, which you can do with modern phones. It's starting to become possible. Uh, there are some apps out there that you can take longer exposures and even within the modern phones we do have night sky mode and you can try your hand out at that if it's a deep sky object. And keep in mind all of the functionality that the phones come with including tap to focus uh, which remember your focus should really be being done with the telescope itself and uh, then you can also press and hold and it'll create a little box and you can adjust the brightness of the image um, right there on the phone. So that's pretty nice. You can really, you know, overexpose or underexpose an image if you're not careful. All right, everybody, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you haven't done so already, please like this video and subscribe to Cosmos Safari. And as always, keep looking up and I'll see you in the next video.